We have been looking at uh, Wolfgang Street's five disorders of capitalism <clears throat> and we looked at uh, stagnation last time. Today hopefully we'll look at uh, oligarchic uh, redistribution and the plundering of, uh, of the public domain. So with the stagnation <clears throat> of these five, uh, you know, the five, uh, uh, the five disorder Wolfgang Streak uh, talks about stagnation, oligarchic redistribution, plundering of the public domain, corruption, and global anarchy. Um, of them, stagnation is the fundamental because uh, that goes to the very. So the other four might be considered repercussions or consequences of of the first one to to a large extent um, so stagnation as we looked last time stagnation um, in part it comes to the very nature of capitalism Capitalism leads to concentration, unprecedented, uh, unprecedented concentration of capital, <clears throat> and that leads to fall in in the relative profits and the relative rate rate of growth. But capital, capital, cap, capitalism can't accept that uh, uh, because it's based on uh, the very idea of growth, very idea of accumulation for the sake of accumulation. And that leads to various problems, uh, lack of growth, obviously relative growth, always relative, because the reason we talked about it last time, leads to the problem within capitalism, that is the the problem with the rationality of capitalism uh, so you can't accept the low growth for a long time so extended period of time you have to do something about it otherwise the raison d'etre of the system or rationale of the system you know that collapses and then that leads to all sort of uh, legitimation problems and um, lack of growth also lead to social and political problems because growth can be used to redistribute some of the fruits of capital accumulation to the wider population which is necessary for accumulation itself because it sustains the demand but it's also necessary to you know keep the population happy and keep them stuck with the capital with the, with the system so for all this reason you have to do something about it and one of the things which has happened in the last 30 40 years is uh, financialization to overcome the problem of growth and in financial fi financial capital you have you avoid a lot of problems which are related to the physical, uh, the problem of accumulation through production and all that. And also you, you can 
achieve uh, unprecedented uh, profits and growth within within the sector um, because it doesn't have some of the limits which are related to 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 the physical or the production based capital accumulation um, but um, there are two major problems with this one is um, so 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 they try to so just to go back a bit uh, you try to overcome the problem of stagnation lack of growth through moving uh, and that that's that you have, you have a lot of uh, uh, you have a lot of surplus uh, both within the household and with capital capitalists or the investors but the problem was they weren't investing because of the lack of the investment opportunities and uh, and the rate of profits uh, due to saturation and all that so you go to financialization and you you know overcome this problem for a while or to a certain extent but financialization has one major structural problem and that ensures that financialization can't be something stable, can't be something which can be the basis of a stable society. And that uh, structural problem is the problem of the imbalance between actual growth and by actual growth I mean here the growth in the you know actual physical production or even service sector and for uh, financial growth um, And this, uh, because and financial growth is the growth in in money market and capital market, uh, the growth of diaphragm. But this growth is uh, based in actual growth. Um, the balance between them is precarious. So just to give you a graphic example, in a sustainable economy, an economy which is balanced, this should be your actual growth. And this should be your financial growth. Then you have financial growth based in something real. 
but when finance is be finance become the dominant form of capital accumulation and dominant form of growth then what we get is this what we get is something like that so this is finance and this is the actual growth now this can't be nothing because the the because all the financial speculation is based on or premised on actual economy the actual or the real economy but when this happens uh, uh, the balance between finance and actual capital becomes very thin very precarious and any jitter in economy any failure of uh, expectation uh, any major incident incident can lead to the collapse of this uh, this is this is what we call financial bubble and that bubble bursts you know cyclically um, and major institutions uh, financial institution go bankrupt or on the brink of bankruptcy and since a lot of people um, investments and livelihood depend, depends on that and especially because the financial sector is politically so strong so they can't go you know, they, they become too big to fail. Even though if they actually fail, it's not going to affect a large portion of population. But that um, population, 10% say, and the major of part of it is the 1%, and even the bulk of that is point. Uh, one percent or so but since they are politically dominant their political cloud uh, so you you get rescue packages from from um, central banks which have really become arms of finance capital sense so you get cheap money get cheap credit sector and you revive the economy etc and it happens again and again it becomes um, economically unsustainable and also politically unsustainable Um, but since, but because uh, the financial capitalists are dominant politically, especially in America, you can't do anything about it. So you have to really adjust the real economy and government. Uh, expenditure again and again to keep financial economy strong and robust so this economy is basically sacrifices again and again for the sake that's you know a minority of a population keep reaping the benefits of uh, the bulk of the benefits of uh, financial growth and 
you can keep uh, the capitalism or the capitalist economy keep growing. But the growth is um, um, financial financial economy keep growing and making a lot of prof profit. But this leads to the second problem, and that problem is. Uh, is that the, the growth in financial capital or financial sector um, may not and increasingly doesn't may not uh, result in growth in the real economy. So when, when government uh, pumps in a lot of money to revive the financial market cheap money, cheap credit that doesn't lead to more investment in the real economy that only uh, inflate the existing assets and and the salaries and bonuses of the managers of uh, financial um, capital because in capitalism there is no direct and simple relation between the creation of cheap money or even money and credit is created by the central bank and the expansion of the output why because output is expanding but that is not necessarily expanding in the real economy that is going mostly as I said to increase uh, the level of monetary claims on existing output so in the form of um, increase in the or inflation of the existing um, financial instruments and also into the pockets of the managers of capital so monetary um, Increase in the level of monet, um, increase in the level of monetary. The in, the credit doesn't lead to increase in the level of monetary claims on existing outputs. It's it's re, it's rather 
um, leads to 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 the um, inflation on the inflation of the existing uh, financial instrument and the salaries of the uh, capital class or managerial financial managerial class so in other words credit doesn't lead to investment in actual economy goes back to financial capital and that problem um, and this results in two things firstly the problem of imbalances becomes even more acute so this is being strengthened but it is shrunk shrinking more uh, in proportion to the real economy and this real economy is not being helped um, oh sorry the other way around and um, the real economy is not being helped and financial economy is becoming more and more that's the one thing so imbalance becomes even more precarious um, and the second thing is, um, since uh, all the profits and major growth is happening in financial capital, the rewards are only going to that, let's say, I mean, that's very generous, 10% and the 90%, you know, they become, their situation it either remains same or even become more, um, precarious and the inequality increases and and the quality of public services you know deteriorate, deteriorate more and so on um, in general capitalist um, policy in there of financial capital uh, and which is mainly monetary policy has not generated profitable investment opportunities To absorb the tremendous amount of household and business savings that the capital system is capable of generating and those savings are mostly going to financial capital which is basically most based on speculation and it doesn't lead to investment in the physical production even though they keep saying doesn't lead to uh, you know investment in public utilities roads infrastructure which are in a dire need because if you do that then you know this is going to take away money from the financial sector which is the main which has become the main sector and it also lead to other things which financial capitalists don't like so what happens is the due to this dominance, dominance of finance capital, potential output is defined or you can say redefined as the output 
which is achieved while maximizing financial sector profit. So the growth of capitalist uh, economy becomes synonymous to the growth of financial sector, which is not even say 10% of the economy, and then 90% suffer, which leads to inequality, poor public service, etc. And obviously, then it becomes the task of the economists to justify that. The economists, they are the priest of capitalism. Most of them, anyway. Um, so these economists um, who have been rightly dubbed as voodoo economists, they keep arguing that the government is spending and the real economy should adjust to the profit driven logic of the profit driven logic of the financial capital. So the finance dictates what how much government should spend, how much should be the real growth, how it should be how much employment should be there, how much unemployment is fine and how much wages should exist. And this generally leads to low wages poor public service and money is extracted from these to to, to sustain ever growing financial capital and if 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 the If the growth of or profits of financial capital um, requires high level of uh, natural unemployment, low wage rates, Soviet, because that is rational. The rational is to accumulate, and the accumulation is occurring in the financial capital. Capital, so it is um, rational to have high level of natural unemployment. It is rational to have low wages, it is rational to have low or no investment in public se sectors. And if you talk against it, if you raise objection, um, then it's, it's considered irrational. Because to be rational in capitalism, is to accumulate 
for the sake of accumulation and be do whatever socially, economically and politically needed needed to sustain. Uh, that accumulation, even if it destroys real economy, real wages, inter institutions, nature. So it is rational. That's the capitalist rational. Rational to destroy all this in order to sustain growth in the sector in which the growth is actually occurring at the moment, which is the financial sector. In other words, um, and probably I will stop here because it went too long. In other words, um, not accepting the primacy of capital accumulation accumulation is not recognized as a rational attitude or a human right in capitalism and since at this point in history Accepting primacy of capital accumulation is synonymous with accepting the primacy of financial markets and their logic. Therefore, not accepting the authority of financial markets and their decisions and their interest is against rationality it is irrational and those who protest against that they are expressing or manifesting um, irrational behavior or irrational attitude and Their interest, the interest of 90%, uh, are subservient to the interest of this class because this is the class which knows how to accumulate for the sake of accumulation today. Okay, I think um, next time we'll just look at, and, and this um, obviously leads to, as we have shown here, inequality. and um, low wages and the plunder of public sector because we are extracting public sectors uh, uh, the investment which should go to public sector they are going to for buttress and pump up the financial market so these are the three things he talks about in the second and third uh, disorder, so we'll look at his actual text next time. Thank you.